In the thrilling world of Formula E racing, drivers are forced to overcome a load of obstacles each and every race in order to secure a win. Whether it's dangerous car-to-car -car contact, rainy and slick conditions, or just another competitor hot on your tail, there's always something to be concerned about. But it's also battle of battery management that will determine who crosses the finish line victorious. And some drivers consider this the biggest challenge of Formula E racing. The more aggressively a driver accelerates, the faster their usable energy depletes. And each driver is only allocated a certain amount of energy per race. So this begs the question, is leading the race in Formula E a bad thing? In this video, we'll attempt to answer that question. We'll take a look at the current energy regulations, as well as some of the different approaches to energy management in today's Formula E racing. Now, at the start of each Formula E race, drivers are armed with a 38.5 kilowatt of usable energy from their total battery capacity. Their goal, to squeeze every last drop of power from that allowance, leaving almost nothing unused. Going back in time, the battery in the Gen 2 cars weighed 385 kilos, or almost 850 pounds. But in the Gen 3 cars, it's been trimmed down to a sleek 284 kilos, or 636 pounds. Despite the reduction in weight, these new batteries boast a total capacity of 47 kilowatts, only slightly lower than the 54 kilowatts capacity of their Gen 2 counterparts. Now, a typical race in the Formula E circuit usually spans an exhilarating 33 laps. In the past, drivers had to swap cars midway due to battery depletion. But with the advent of Gen 3 race cars, they now have a more powerful batteries and lightning fast recharge capabilities, which has revolutionized the game. Drivers can now power through the entire race without a pit stop. But that does not mean drivers can forget about battery management. Each move they make affects their overall battery levels. Strategies such as lift and coast are almost always implemented by today's drivers, where they lift off the throttle at maximum revs and then coast into a corner. This technique saves battery power, and when coupled with regenerative braking, can actually add some power to their car. More on that later. Energy management can also include the use of attack mode, in which drivers are given a maximum of 4 minutes of increased power to play with. Drivers and their team must choose exactly when to employ this 50 kilowatt boost in order to gain the most from it. Now, let's talk overall strategy. Some drivers prefer the tortoise and hare approach, pacing themselves during the first half of the race. This cunning tactic reserves precious energy for a spectacular late game surge. Just like a crafty fox, they bide their time, conserving energy while others exhaust themselves, before making a thunderous comeback. Take Maximilian Gunther, for example. He's a master of this cunning approach, and it paid off big time in his triumph in Mexico City and his impressive second place finish in Marrakesh in 2020. It's like he's hoarding energy for a grand finale that leaves everyone in awe. On the flip side, there's another strategy in play, and that's when drivers unleash their full potential right from the starting line, making daring moves to secure their positions. But once they've gained ground, they switch gears to a more conservative and economical driving style. Formula E champion jean Eric Verne once displayed this tactical finesse in Marrakesh. Another thing to notice is that in Formula E, drivers have a secret weapon up their sleeve, regenerative braking, in which kinetic energy is diverted from the wheels to a motor, which generates electrical energy for the vehicle. By pulling a paddle on the steering wheel, they can recover up to a whopping 75% of the energy consumed during deceleration. This amazing power-up allows them to recoup valuable energy while coasting. But this braking technology is never quite enough to keep drivers from hitting the ultimate low of completely running out of energy. In the 2019 Mexico City E-Prix, chaos struck. An extended safety car phase threw a wrench in the works, messing with everyone's carefully calculated plans. Pascal Verlein ran out of juice on the home straight, victory slipping through his fingers. In another instance of battery management deciding the winner, we can look at how Nick de Ries won the Valencia e Prix in 2021. All eyes were on Antonio Felix da Costa, who led the pack for most of the event since starting in pole position. But after a whopping five safety car deployment, things began to change for everybody. With the final safety car out, drivers were limited to 19 kilowatts of energy. DS to Cheetah team principal Mark Preston was quoted as saying, 
If you have a safety car at the beginning of the race, you've got a lot of time to make up changes along the way. But if it happens right before the last lap, then all your calculations go out the window. Incredibly, over half the field of drivers ran out of energy before the finish line. Luckily, De Vries had managed to maintain his energy and was able to complete the race in first place. Even the infamous Dan Ticktum, who made his debut in Formula E last season after a stellar fourth place finish in the 2021 FIA F2 Championship, has a unique perspective on the energy consumption challenge. Halfway through his first race, Ticktum found himself grappling with the demands of his car's energy. Despite initially leading the pack, he soon discovered that others had strategically conserved their energy from the very beginning. A tough lesson learned for this young driver who placed 18th in the race. So it seems the question still remains. Is it better to lead the entire competition and hope you've maintained enough energy to complete the race, or do more winners hang back in the rankings until the near end, ensuring they have the energy to burst past the leaders? The answer is, it depends. Each team has a different approach to this, and we've seen winners and losers come from each of these methods. So it really comes down to the situations the drivers find themselves in during each and every race meaning no two races are alike. And with the addition of rapid charging stations coming in season 10, we're left wondering if drivers will change their approach to battery management altogether. Because, as the wise Maximilian Gunter once said, energy management is everything in Formula E. And he proved this recently by breaking the pole sitter's curse and winning the second race in Jakarta, reminding us all that leaders still can win races if they play their cards right. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel to help us grow.